We like to think that when we get on a boat or a ship, we make it to our destinations safely, and for most of us, that happens. But sometimes, it doesn't, and for some reason, we end up with more questions than answers. From a chilling distress signal with a dead crew to an abandoned ship with nothing out of place, here are 20 most mysterious ghost ships. Number 20. SS Urang Madan There has long been a strange story about the SS Urang Madan, a Dutch ship that sailed the seas in the 1940s and passed through the Strait of Malacca when something unusual happened. Nearby vessels reported getting a distress call, with someone stating that the captain was dead and probably the whole crew. There was then a frenzy of Morse code that was unintelligible before the person on the radio said, I die. And he did. When people boarded the vessel later, everything was as the man had described. The crew was dead and strewn about the deck, with their faces upturned to the sun as if they had seen an unknown horror. Even the ship's dog had died and appeared to be growling at something. Some reports also suggest that a fire broke out shortly after people boarded, forcing them to evacuate. It then exploded with incredible force and sank. There have been question marks about what happened ever since, with some experts wondering whether the ship exploded because it had been carrying cyanide and nitroglycerin in the cargo hold. They also think that since many of the bodies were unwounded, the same deadly materials might have also poisoned everyone on board. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the star topic. This mysterious ship washed up on Ireland's coast, and there wasn't a single trace of any crew. It had no markings to suggest its nationality, no branding, no flags, no nothing. It was also incredibly rusty, as if it had been at sea for the whole time, and this is the recreation of how the ship might have looked. We can't share the actual ship, because after no one dared to enter it when it initially washed up, it disappeared during the night and was never seen again. What do you think happened? Could it have had people on board? Comment down below with the hashtag StarTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. The SS Valencia the Ironhold passenger steamer SS Valencia was all packed up in San Francisco with 108 passengers and 56 crew ready to set off to Seattle in late January 1906. While the crew was experienced, they perhaps weren't on the best vessel to be sailing along the Pacific coast, as it was too small, too open to the elements, and very challenging to navigate in the winter. But they set off anyway, and it was the last trip the SS Valencia and its passengers and crew would take. Take. As they made it to Cape Mendocino just outside San Francisco on January 22nd, they had to sound the whistle and slow the speed due to the thick fog. The wind had also turned, and it wasn't long until a combination of the wind, fog, and current had set them on the wrong course. Just before midnight that night, the ship ran into rocks. As expected, the passengers panicked and rushed to the lifeboats. However, it was absolute bedlam when they tried to save themselves. Some of the lifeboats were smashed against the side of the ship, and some were lowered too early or too late. Only a few made it into the water with passengers aboard. Even though they were a mere 50 meters from the shore, they couldn't reach it, and men, women, and children were stranded on the ship's deck, with huge waves carrying them away. Even when help arrived in the form of three ships, Topeka, Salvador, and Queen, they could only watch as the SS Valencia sank and its passengers died from drowning, hypothermia, or getting hit by something. It was just too dangerous for them to get close to the vessel in the weather conditions. Out of everyone on SS Valencia, just 37 men survived, and it's believed that more than 100 people lost their lives. Number 18. The Carol A. Deering 
The Carol A. Deering was a beauty. It was a five-mastered schooner measuring 255 feet long and 44 feet wide, and it weighed 1,879 tons. At the time, it was the largest ship C.G. Deering Company had ever built, and was also one of the last wooden cargo ships ever made. It set off from Norfolk, Virginia in 1920 on its way to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil with coal to deliver. Captain William H. Merritt was the captain, and his son, Sewell Merritt was the first mate. They had a crew of 10. When the captain fell ill, they stopped at the Port of Luz in Delaware so the captain and first mate could disembark, and Captain Willis B. Wormel and first mate Charles B. McClellan took their places. Before they set off, the new captain told his friend, another ship captain named George Goodwin, that he didn't trust the crew as they were unruly. He also told another captain, Hugh Norton, that he was having trouble with the crew, especially the first mate, Charles McClellan who mistreated the crew and was often drunk ashore. Charles also told that same captain, Hugh Norton, while drunk, that he'll get the captain before they get to Norfolk. Later, the ship passed the Cape Lookout lightship, and someone on the Carol A. Deering yelled through a megaphone to them, saying that they had lost both anchors and chains in a storm, and they asked the lightship keeper to let the ship owner know. The lightship keeper noticed that the crew seemed to be milling around on the ship's quarter deck, where they usually weren't allowed. The next day, the Deering was seen sailing directly for the Diamond Shoals before being spotted running aground. The vessel was abandoned, but the navigation equipment, crew personal belongings, ship log, life rafts, and two lifeboats were missing. None of the people aboard were ever seen again. Number 17. The Octavius the Octavius left London, England for Asia in late 1761 and arrived as it should have the following year. However, the captain decided that since the weather had been unusually warm, they would attempt to travel home via the Northwest Passage, which connects the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean through the Arctic Ocean in the north of Canada. Up till that point, no one had been able to complete that route, but they believed they had enough good weather and momentum to do it. Now, to put the dangers of this route into perspective, an ice-bound northern route wasn't found until 1850 when Robert McClure went around the Americas with a boat and sledge. No ship was able to complete the journey until around 50 years later, and it took the first man, Norwegian explorer Roald Amundsen, four years from 1903 to 1906. So the captain aboard the Octavius had far too much confidence, and it proved deadly. They were never heard from again. However, a whaling ship called the Herald stumbled upon the Octavius buried in the ice in 1775. All 28 crew were found aboard frozen, along with the captain's wife and child huddled in a blanket in the corner. They had been that way for 13 years. The captain was found sitting at his desk with his pen in his hand. The last recorded position in his journal was 250 miles north of Alaska, and Octavius was located west of Greenland. This means the ship made the trip through the tight channels after the crew had already died. Number 16. Hoyita. The Hoyita was a 70-foot luxury yacht used as a Pacific patrol boat during World War II and for patrolling the waters around Hawaii. She was in reasonably good condition, apart from some minor damage after running around, and went on to be used as a fishing charter vessel in the 1950s. The yacht was mostly made of wood with cedar planking and, unusually, a cork lining which added incredible buoyancy. The ship was much lighter than the water, and pretty much nothing could make her sink. In 1950, in 1955, Hoida was on her way from Samoa to Tokelau Islands with construction materials and medical supplies aboard, and it would take around 48 hours to travel the 270 miles. Even though one of the engines wasn't running, it wasn't seen as an issue since it was a short distance and the weather was good. The ship was reported overdue three days later, and no distress calls had come in from any of the 16 crew or 9 passengers aboard. Even after patrolling the area for a week, there were no signs of her. Five weeks later, a merchant ship 600 miles to the west saw a random ship adrift, and they didn't respond to their hails. 
the captain investigated and found it abandoned with cargo missing. The ship was fine, but some rooms above the waterline had been damaged. There was also broken glass, bloody bandages, and a doctor's bag. Now, the damage wasn't severe enough for them to have abandoned the ship, but three lifeboats were gone. Some think pirates were to blame, but we might never know for sure. The crew were never seen again. Number 15. Mary Celeste After hearing about its history, many would assume that the American brigantine Mary Celeste was an unlucky vessel. It was built in 1861 and named Amazon before it experienced countless issues like the death of a captain from pneumonia and running aground on Cape Breton Island. Eventually, it was sold to new owners and renamed Mary Celeste. In 1812, Mary Celeste set off from New York City, bound for Genoa, Italy, with 1,700 barrels of alcohol on board. The ship also had 10 people on board, including Captain Benjamin Spooner Briggs, his wife, and their two-year-old daughter. On the two weeks of its journey, Mary Celeste battled severe weather conditions. The last log entry, dated November 25th, showed the vessel was about six nautical miles from the Azores and 10 days later, it was found deserted with more than three feet of water in the hold. Now, that amount of water couldn't have sunk Mary Celeste, but the crew was missing along with a longboat. None of the ship's occupants were ever found, and it's believed a mishap with the longboat caused them all to perish. Number 14. The Kaz 2. The Kaz-2 catamaran was found drifting off the coast of Australia in 2007 with none of the three-person crew on board. It was almost like they had just upped and vanished since everything was left in its place, such as a table set with food, an operational GPS, life jackets, and a laptop open, and so on. Some people speculated that the brothers Peter and John Turnstead and the skipper, Des Batten, had staged their disappearance for insurance, while others think drug smugglers or pirates were involved. There were even theories about paranormal events. However, after a year of speculation, a coroner set out to explain what led to the men's disappearances just three days into their two-month journey to Western Australia. When it was found, the engine was idling, a newspaper was lying open, and there was a large supply of food, beer, a rifle, and ammunition. Coroner Michael Barnes concluded that a series of unfortunate events led to the death of the inexperienced sailors. He believed the scenario was that one of the brothers had tried to untangle a fishing line from the propeller when he fell overboard. The other brother fell while attempting to rescue him. The skipper had then tried to drop the sails to turn the yacht and pick the men up, but the direction of the wind resulted in the boom swinging and knocking him overboard. Once in the rough waters, all three men wouldn't have been able to get back to the Kaz-2 and likely drowned. Number 13. The Jian Sang The ocean is absolutely massive, so it's probably not all that unusual that an 80-meter long tanker was left drifting in the sea for an incredibly long time before being found. The ship, which was eventually identified as Jian Seng but is of unknown origin, was seen drifting near Waipa, Queensland by an Australian Coast Watch plane in 2006. Upon further investigation, the ship was found to be inoperable with a broken tow rope and no one aboard. All identifying marks of the vessel had been removed, but there were any signs of violence or illegal happenings. The Coast Guard could never find out where the ship had come from, so they scuttled it in deep water. When they boarded the boat, they found no sign of any recent human activity, but there was a large amount of rice on board. This led people to think it may have been used as a resupply ship for fishing boats outside the Australian exclusive economic zone. Both engines were inoperable and couldn't be restarted, and other components appeared to have been extensively stripped. It's likely that it was on its way to a scrapyard when the towing line severed. Number 12. The Sam Ratulangi PB-1600 
In 2018, a 177-meter-long cargo ship, identified as the Sam Radulanji PB-1600, was found floating on the Indian Ocean, and it raised more questions than answers. Fishermen discovered it on August 27th, and the Navy in Myanmar launched an investigation. They found the boat to be rusty and rough, but in working condition. However, no crew was on board. The investigation also revealed that the vessel was built in 2006 and had last been recorded in 2009 near Taiwan. It was registered in Indonesia and was believed to be lost or decommissioned for almost a decade. According to the Myanmar Navy, two long cables were found attached to its nose, which made them think another vessel was towing it. Upon questioning a crew in Indonesia, they learned it had been towed from Jakarta, Indonesia to a salvage factory in Bangladesh in August. But a storm caused their tow cables to snap, and they abandoned the cargo ship in the Indian Ocean. However, it's still unknown where it was before its towing journey, and was unaccounted for in the nine years prior. Number 11. SS Waratah Ship in 1909, the SS Waratah was on its way from Sydney to London when it just vanished with 211 passengers and crew aboard. A passing ship had spotted it off South Africa's east coast, but no one ever saw it again after that sighting. Its wreckage was never discovered, nor were any of the people on board. It just seemed to vanish into thin air or very, very deep water. The steamship had only been built the previous year and was a luxury passenger liner meant to work as an emigrant ship operating from the UK to Australia. She had many advanced features for her time, including a distillery to produce fresh water and eight watertight components to prevent sinking. The captain, Josiah Ilberry, was also very experienced and had served with the Blue Anchor Line for upwards of four decades. Relatives of those lost at sea refused to give up on finding their loved ones, and they, with the help of the public, funded a three-month search. However, no trace was ever found, and family and friends never learned what happened. However, a court of inquiry later concluded that the ship capsized during a storm and sank so quickly that all debris was trapped below the wreck. Blue Anchor Line wasn't directly blamed for the tragedy, but the public lost confidence, and they sold the rest of their fleet to another company. Number 10. Korean People's Army Ghost Boats For several months and even years, battered and worn wooden ghost boats were found drifting through the Sea of Japan. They didn't contain any cargo, but they typically did contain the corpses of starved fishermen from North Korea. In 2019, more than 150 such boats washed ashore in Japan, and there were believed to be more than 500 like them in the last five years. What on earth is going on? The Japanese police wondered whether climate change was pushing squid populations away from North Korea, so desperate fishermen were traveling further out, becoming stranded and dying from exposure. But the reality could actually be much worse. An investigation using satellite data found that the more likely explanation is that China was sending industrial boats to fish illegally in North Korean waters, violently displacing smaller North Korean vessels in the process. Process. It's also believed they were responsible for a more than 70% decline in squid stocks, which used to be abundant. The alleged 800 Chinese vessels spotted in 2019 appear to violate the United Nations sanctions, which forbid foreign fishing in those waters. Number 9. The Ghost Ship of Vesa Vesa was a beautiful and ornately decorated warship just 0.7 miles into the harbor when a gust of wind caught it and rolled it onto its side. Water poured through the Vesa's cannon ports, causing the warship to sink right to the bottom, drowning all 50 people on board. This all happened in front of an afternoon crowd who had gathered to watch the ship leaving on August 10th, 1628. Now, ships don't just sink that easily, so why did Vesa sink in what was basically just a light breeze? Most experts think Vesa was too top-heavy. The cannons were too heavy, and it even almost flipped over during a basic capsize test 
before it hit open water. Vesa remained beneath the waves of the Swedish harbor for several hundred years until it was raised in 1961. Surprisingly, it was in excellent condition, with more than 90% of the wood and artifacts like coins and shoes still intact. Even some human remains had been partially preserved all that time. It's believed that the cold, brackish water had preserved it, with salty water killing pests and microbes that would have normally eaten the ship. Number 8. Lusitania Ship The Lusitania departed from New York bound for Liverpool on May 1, 1915, but it shouldn't have. German authorities had published a warning in U.S. newspapers and German subs had sunk British merchant ships by the time Lusitania was getting ready to set off. As the vessel came to the end of her crossing, a German U-boat had just sunk three British ships south of Ireland, where the Lusitania was about to sail. And despite repeated warnings to Captain William Turner that the U-boats were active on his course, he still kept going. In fact, he even slowed down due to fog. It seemed that the captain Captain was ignoring all instructions provided. He was traveling too close to the shore where the U-boats preferred to lurk and wasn't going at top speed. Nor was he zigzagging, a tactic that many boats tried to adopt. So it probably wasn't surprising that a U-20 fired a single torpedo at the Lusitania, which hit the hull. 18 minutes later, Lusitania had sunk killing 1,195 of the 1,959 people on board. Captain Turner survived the attack, and it's believed that the loss of the ship helped shape public opinion for America to join the war. Number 7. El Caleuche People who live off the coast of Chile on the Chiloé archipelago are isolated. As a result of their isolation, they've had to be entirely self-sufficient and independent. They survive on their natural resources, and the sea is a massive part of their lives. This has meant that they've come up with their own ways to explain how they view the world, which includes mythology and folklore about the sea and everything within it. One such story relates to El Caleuche, a phantom ship believed to be alive. It's awake and on guard against potential intruders. As the legend goes, it's a white ship with three masts and five sails and travels through the water with light coming from all its windows and music echoing across the water. It sounds like there are celebrations aboard the ship. Apparently, people who see it try to get near it, but it disappears when other ships get too close. Some people believe it can travel underwater. The story of El Calayuche also mentions two types of people aboard. Dead humans brought back to life and supernatural beings from Chilote mythology who are in control of the boat. Humans who drowned at sea man the ship and they were brought aboard by mythical creatures from the royal family of the sea. Number 6. Young Teaser Young Teaser from New York City was a privateer schooner with five guns and three dummy guns, well known for having captured 12 British vessels. Young Teaser met its end in Mahone Bay, Nova Scotia during the War of 1812. After British ships chased her and one known as HMS Hogue eventually trapped her, a member of her own crew blew her up. And that's pretty much why Young Teaser is so well known. Most of the crew died in the explosion, and folklore lived long after the destruction of the schooner known as the Ghostly Teaser Light. This story is one of the most well-known ghost ship stories in Atlantic Canada. Allegedly, a fiery glow or an entire flaming ship regularly appears near the explosion site in Mahone Bay. Often, it's sighted around the anniversary of the explosion on June 27th. However, the very first accounts of the light were from the 19th century. Number 5. Seabird SV Seabird, later known as Beach Bird, was a merchant brig controlled by John Huxham. Some accounts refer to him as John Durham or Husham. In either 1750 or 1760, the ship was found grounded at Easton Beach in Rhode Island while on a trip back from Honduras. 
It had been expected in Newport that same day. Apparently, the ship had been abandoned with land in sight and had drifted off course. It had been found with coffee still boiling on the galley stove. However, John wasn't found on board. Instead, just his cat and dog, which fortunately were still alive. After John's disappearance, the merchant brig was sold to a Newport merchant who renamed it Beachbird. There have been many stories about what happened to John, but no one knows what happened for sure. Number 4. Flying Dutchman the Flying Dutchman is a ghost ship of legends that allegedly can never make port. Instead, it continuously sails the seven seas, and if you ever see it, your vessel might end up doomed, just like the Flying Dutchman. The story is thought to have come from the 17th century Golden Age, and the oldest known extant version dates back to the 18th century. Apparently, if another ship hails the Flying Dutchman, the Flying Dutchman crew would try to send messages to land or even to people who have long been dead. People who supposedly caught sight of the Flying Dutchman in the 19th and 20th centuries said it glowed with a ghostly light. Number 3. The Beichimo The story of the 230-foot-long steam-engined Beichimo is a wild one. In September 1931, she was on the way to Vancouver when a blizzard at Seahorse Islands on the northern coast of Alaska saw the crew forced to anchor her and weather the storm. Before long, she was caught in ice, and the crew that remained with the ship started making winter accommodations outside of the ship using parts of the ship so they could remain comfortable until spring. At the end of November, another storm hit the area, and when it cleared, Beichimo was gone. The crew believed it had sunk, but it was later spotted 72 kilometers south of where they had been hunkering down, and it was caught in ice once more. They reached the vessel, retrieved the cargo, and abandoned the ship, believing it was no longer seaworthy after its solo journey. Once the crew left, it was spotted again about 480 kilometers away from where it was last seen, and the following March, it was seen floating near the shore of Alaska. Decades later, people used to spot it in random places. For example, indigenous Alaskans found it in 1933 and sheltered aboard for 10 days during a storm. It was then seen off the northwest coast of Alaska in 1935, again in 1939 when plans were being made to salvage it, and it was finally found frozen in an ice pack in 1969. This was the last recorded sighting, and it was nearly 40 years after it was abandoned. It's now presumed sunk. Number 2. The Lady Lovabond In the mid-1700s, there was a superstition that it was bad luck for women to be on ships as they sailed. It was just a superstition, but it might have been true in the case of the three-mast schooner Lady Lovabond. In 1748, Lady Lovabond set off along the Thames River bound for Portugal. The captain, Simon Reed, was newly married and decided to bring his wife, Annetta, along for the journey as a honeymoon trip. Everyone was celebrating below deck with the newly married couple, everyone except for first mate, John Rivers. John had been Simon's captain and the best man at his wedding, but he was madly in love with Simon's wife. The jealousy and anger overcame him, so he decided to do something about it. As they traveled through a dangerous part of the English Channel, known as Goodwin Sands, he changed the course so the ship would be sucked into the sediment. At least 1,000 wrecks had been recorded in that same area since 1298, so the chances of Lady Lovabond reaching her end there were high, and it did. As the ship passed through the dangerous area, John attacked the ship's bosun, a senior deck department member, and steered the vessel into the Goodwin Sands. The ship was destroyed, and everyone died. Legend has it that every 50 years, captains passing through the area report nearly colliding with a three-masted schooner, but when rescue teams arrive, there's no such boat. Number 1. High Aim 6 Taiwanese fishing vessel High Aim 6 left southern Taiwan on October 31st, 2002, and everything seemed normal. However, it was found without its crew drifting in Australian waters in early January of the following year. Vessel owner Sai Huang Shuehe had last spoken with the ship's captain in December 2002. 
The vessel was found in calm waters 80 miles east of Rowley Shoals with the entire crew missing and no explanation for why they had disappeared. All crew personal effects were on board and there seemed to be no reason for the abandonment. There was also plenty of fuel, provisions, and no signs of a struggle. Five days before it was finally boarded, the motor had been running, but when it was boarded, the engine was dead with the rudder locked. An Indonesian crew member was later tracked down and admitted that the captain and engineer had both been murdered, but the motive for the random mutiny was unclear. If you weren't fearful about jumping aboard a ship, you might be now. Some of these situations seem downright absurd. Do you think you have some of the answers to these spooky ship situations? Share your thoughts in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.